Well, hello everyone. This is Andre Battles, your friend and fellow sinner, saved by grace and clothed in Christ's righteousness. You can come back home. You know, I was counseling with a dear friend of mine. Actually, it's really a family member. But to keep their identity unanimous, I'll just say a dear friend. And I told this individual the following. You see, there's someone under the sound of my voice whose marriage is failing. There's someone under the sound of my voice who is sunken deeper into cocaine addiction, cigarette addiction. There's someone, Jennifer Lawrence, under the sound of my voice, who has fallen deeper into sin. That's S-I-N. And you feel hopeless. You look at your circumstances and you say, there is no way that I'm going to be able to fix this situation. You look at your surroundings and you feel as if that perhaps you're in the wrong place. I mean, everywhere you look, you see problems. You see stress. You see problems. You see stress. You see issues. You see calamity. And as you consider all of this, you begin to wonder, can God do something for you? I'm going to flip the script and I'm going to show you how God will use your problems to bring you back home. Because you see, someone under the sound of my voice has not been talking to God for five, six, three, four years. Someone under the sound of my voice has not had that connection with God for quite some time. And what you don't realize is that God will begin to use your problems to draw you back home. And I'm going to use the story of the prodigal son to illustrate exactly what I mean. You see, the prodigal son had a problem. Homeboy wanted to get loose. He said to his father one day, I need my bread. I need my money. I need my inheritance so I can go out into this world and do me. I just want to have fun and be footloose and fancy free. So what did the father say? The father said to him, okay, fine. I'll let you have your inheritance. I'll give you what you're asking me for. Although I don't want you to go, I'll let you have what it is that you're requesting, and I'll let you go. And the prodigal son took his inheritance, and he went out into the world, and he had a great time. That is, until the money ran out, and until all of his friends uh, showed themselves to truly be merely acquaintances. They weren't real friends. And when you consider that there was a certain phase in that story where the prodigal son got to thinking. You see, he hit rock bottom. Everything had become a mess. All of the money that he had gotten from his father was wasted. All of his friends had uh, abandoned him. And he found himself now eating the food that pigs eat. And when this problem arose in his heart, there is something else that arose in him. You see, what we don't understand is we don't see how God uses problems in the life to bring us back home. We think that when we go out into the world and we have our fun and that when we bury ourselves in drugs, women, men, and alcohol, that God no longer wants anything to do with us. And we feel, because Satan has now allowed us to think this way, that God has cut the tie. He no longer wants anything to do with you. But at the end of the day, when you begin to realize what L-O-V-E, L-O-V-E is, when you begin to realize what love really is, then you understand that love is not some passive uh, emotion that when you don't do what I ask, I fall out of love. God does not fall out of love with you because you've walked away from Him. He is hoping that through the stress that you run into eventually, through the failures that you run into eventually, through the mishaps and through the poor choices, that you will find yourself, turn around, and come home. And so it's just like that in the story. 
The prodigal son begins to realize that I don't have food to eat. All of my clothes are tattered and torn. What am I going to do? And the Bible says immediately that he comes to his right mind and he goes home. What is his right mind? His right mind is the mind that tells him that, you know what? Daddy loves me. Daddy cares for me. And although I have been rebellious, and although I have been piss poor in my behavior, at least I can go home and talk him into allowing me to be a servant. And so he did. But what he didn't realize, and what we don't realize, is while we're on our journey in the world doing us and having all the fun, and chasing the money and the women and the men and the attention and all these other things that God, our Father, is at home waiting for us. In fact, He has left home and went on a journey to find us because He knows that we're going to return home. So when the prodigal returns, before he even gets home, he finds the Father waiting for him. And what does the Father say to him? Boy, you make me sick. Man, get out of my face. You took my inheritance, all that money I gave you, and you just wasted it. You had fun. You snorted lines. You smoked cigarettes. You smoked weed. You was having sex with all kind of women. Get out of my face. Is that what the father said? The father told the son, Boy, I've been waiting for you. In fact, when the son tried to sell him the pitch of becoming a servant, what did the father say? Man, look, I ain't worried about what you're saying to me, son. You ain't coming back to this house as no servant. You are king. He fell on his neck. He kissed him. He took the ring off his finger, put it on the son. He took his robe off and put it on the son. And when they got home, they threw a party. The moral of the story here is this. You may look into your life and see problems. Don't become discouraged. Because those very problems are the tools that God will use to bring you home. The problems that you face. The issues that you are dealing with. The broken marriage. The broken relationships between you and your children. The situation that you face on your job. You having overdosed and the doctor having barely saved your life. You having been strung out on drugs and alcohol. You perhaps catching some venereal disease as a result of your behavior. Those are the problems that God will use to get you to come back home. And when you return back home, you ain't going to meet a father there waiting to spank your tail and to tell you how sick he is of you and how upset he is with you and that you need to turn around and go back because I don't know what you're coming here for. No, that's not the kind of father you're going to find. The type of father that you're going to find is one with arms open wide, ready to receive you and to bring you back into fellowship and to love you. So when you see the problems in your life, don't despair. Don't become discouraged. It is God's way of saying to you, it's time to come home. This is Andre Battles, your friend and fellow sinner, saved by grace and clothed in Christ's righteousness. If this message has been a blessing to you, I'm going to ask you to do me a solid. Hit the share button and be blessed.